Okay, y'all, so this is going to be my first video in the Back to Basic series. And I would say one of the most prevalent questions I get is about revolvers and the different kinds of revolvers and all that sort of stuff. So I thought I'm going to get together some of my favorite revolvers. And we're going to talk about what is single action, what is double action, what is double action only, and that sort of thing, and talk about some of this revolver stuff. So let's start out with single action. Here's some of the basic components of a revolver, this being single action. Grip, trigger guard, trigger, barrel, front sight, rear sight, cylinder, hammer, loading gate. The loading gate opens like that, revealing the cylinder, allow you to load the cartridges. When you're done and you have the spent cases, after you've shot, then you have, here is your extractor rod, and you can see it lines up and allows you to help extract that spent case. That is the basic parts of your single action revolver. So this is a Ruger New Model Blackhawk chambered in 45 Colt, and it is indeed a single action revolver. And what I mean by that is to fire the revolver you have to pull the hammer back, and then you can pull the trigger. And that is your single action. The hammer is down, and you pull the trigger, nothing's going to happen. Single action revolvers generally also do not have a swing out cylinder like you're used to seeing. You're going to load through a loading gate one round at a time. Now. The cool thing about some of these Ruger revolvers is, while this is chambered in 45 Colt, Ruger has some convertible revolvers. This one is being convertible, and it comes with another cylinder, and this cylinder will accommodate 45 Auto, which is essentially an, for unlike a 1911 or an automatic, but the cylinder is drilled so that you actually have a simulated chamber in each one of these and so it's head spacing off the case mouth like it's supposed to. And here's another, this is a Ruger Super Blackhawk in 44 Magnum and another single action revolver. You know, pull the trigger, hammer goes down, nobody's home. Now that brings us to double action revolver. Double action revolver basic parts they're going to be very similar as the single action you've got your grip area your stocks your hammer your barrel your front sight your rear sight your cylinder your trigger guard and your trigger on the left side this is the cylinder release on Colts you pull them to the rear and that allows you to swing the cylinder out where you can access it for loading and unloading you can load them one at a time, or we speed loader, speed strip, and then to get the empty cases out, I'll demo with a live case, live round. You see here, when I push on this smartly, you can see there's a star wheel extractor coming out, extracting that case. So, you know, when you're done for the day shooting or you're done, you've got that cylinder empty, you flip the gun over and you smartly hit that star wheel extractor and that extracts all the cases. When I tell people that are reloading revolver, this is how I like to see them do it. You know, everybody, you've heard me talk about that workspace, that one foot by one foot by one foot cube you have in front of your body. When you're reloading your revolver, reloading that workspace. Whether you choose to use a speed loader or a loader strip. Now the loader strips are a little slower, but they're also easy to carry in your pocket. You know, and I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with these, but real quick like a rabbit, speed loader just fits in there and you turn the handle and then you've got six more ready to go. If you're using it off the speed strip or loading strip, you essentially just stick one in and you're just kind of like breaking it off if that makes any sense. And that's how that loads. But back to double action. Empty. The reason I call this, or the reason it's called a double action revolver, the reason I call this a double action revolver is because it indeed can fire by 
pulling the hammer back and pulling the trigger. Just like the single action. But also, you can just pull the trigger. And it'll fire. Now the benefits of firing it in single action. Watch when I pull that hammer back. Watch my trigger. Most of your travel for the trigger is taken up when you pull the hammer back. So now you've got a really nice, short, light trigger pull. Versus this. And we're talking a difference of, I think this is about nine or 10 pounds of force required. That was double action. In single action, I think that's about three pounds of force required. So not only are you getting a lot of your take up out of the way of the trigger, you're also reducing the trigger pull weight. Now the benefit of that is, you know, if you're out here and you've got your sights on target and you've got your side alignment sight picture and all that like you want, the, the least amount of trigger pull the less chance you've got of disturbing your sight alignment sight picture. And you can see here, I've actually got two different pythons and you've got two different configurations of stocks. These are more what they call target stocks and these are more what they would call duty stocks. They're smaller, but it's just a different way different people like to configure their revolvers to make it more comfortable for them. Now I like these duty stocks because it allows me to get a lot of my hand in here. They just, they fit better the gun carries a little better than with the target stocks. Now here again, here's another double action revolver. This is a Colt Anaconda in 44 Magnum. Same way, and it's the same deal. Single action, double action. You know, in a, a handgun like this, would probably somebody would be more likely using it as a hunting sidearm. A lot of people are into handgun hunting. And so the benefit of being able to thumb cock that is because you've got your, you know, your 50, 100 yard target set up. Maybe you decided to mount a scope on this revolver, which you absolutely can do. And you've got that really light, you know, single action trigger pull to help you with not disturbing your sight alignment, sight picture. But also if you're carrying this in the woods as a hunting gun and it's double duty as your side protection and you know, grizzly bear jumps up out of the bushes and he's open for business, then you don't have to try to remember to fumble with it. You can just point and click. You know what I mean? Versus with that single action, you're gonna still have to remember to thumb cock that. That's a lot more motions, a lot more fine motor shields that go into something along those lines. And these are all just, you know, points to consider. Now we talked about single action. We talked about double action. Now let's talk about double action only. So here's a Ruger SP-101 and 357 Magnum and double action only, or what some people will call hammerless. However, it is not hammerless, but it does not have a spur. And I'm gonna compare it to another Ruger SP-101 that has the hammer. You, you can see here, spur, no spur. Now this is your traditional double action that can be fired like this or like this. But with the double action only, the only way it can be fired is by pulling the trigger. And when you pull the trigger, you can actually see the hammer there actuating. Now the benefit of this, people say, well, why would you want a double action only revolver? You're gonna lose the ability to thumb cock that hammer to get a more precise shot. Well, A, this is more designed as a concealed carry handgun, and so you're not out there target shooting this more than likely. But B, this hammer spur can be a snag point. If you've got it concealed in a holster or what have you, and God forbid something happens and you've got to get that gun out in a hurry, this double action only is a lot more streamlined far less snag points, so you got less of a chance of a fumble as you draw that gun out to bring it to bear. Now, we talked about these are in 357, 44 Magnum, and all those revolvers are rimmed cartridges. And so, essentially, the case has a rim at the base, so when you load it, that's kind of what stops it from going forward. And that's the very most basic explanation of headspace. But like we talked about with the Ruger New Model Blackhawk convertible 
for a 45 auto which is a straight wall pistol case we've got some cool other revolvers this is a charter arms pit bull now as you can see it is a double action revolver but it's chambered in 45 automatic same as the convertible cylinder and the way that works is To be sure y'all carry your spare ammunition around in your front pocket. And to be sure I don't. I'm sure I got some 45 auto in here somewhere. Oh yeah. So, you know, with, with straight wall pistol cases, you've got that extractor groove that your extractor grabs to when you fire it, the extractor in the slide pulls that spent casing out and kicks it off to load the fresh round. Well, charter arms, you know, they come up with something pretty ingenious. You've got your, your star wheel extractor here to extract your spent cases. Well, they put a little tab in that star wheel extractor. And so when you go to load this 45 auto, which I think is great because it also allows you to use the star wheel extractor when you're done to extract the spent cases. So very cool, something a little different from Charter Arms. And Charter Arms sells a lot of revolvers in straight wall pistol cases. And a lot of people say, well, why would you want that? Why would you want a revolver in 45 Colt, or excuse me, 45 Auto? Well, here's the thing. Like a lot of times if I'm going out of town, I'm a 1911 guy. So I'm gonna carry my 1911, I'm gonna carry me four or five spare mags of 45 Auto. But you heard the old saying, two is one and one is none. I'll take this little pit bull chambered in 45 auto and throw it in my bag. So in the event, you know, God, and I'm probably overthinking this, but in the event, God forbid, something happens, something bad happens, and my 1911 goes down, or I lose her, it gets gone, or I got to loan a gun out to somebody, all my spare ammunition for my 1911 will work in this revolver. And so, you know, like to have all that paired up. So anyway, that's a pretty basic overview of the difference in single action, double action, and double action only revolvers. A little bit about reloading from a speed strip or a speed loader. And then we talked on a little bit about straight ball pistol cases in revolvers. So that's about it for this. We got more to come. Just stay tuned to rainshot.com and our back to basics.